why do you think that it's not talked about enough and that the advice that then is given is so outdated or misunderstood? Well, I'm a little cynical, but I mean, it's just honestly, I, I try not to be like, I'm not a total conspiracy theorist, but I do think that um, maybe I am a little bit, but um, I do just, just a healthy woman is really pretty detached from all of the pharmaceutical interventions that most women will at some point take in their lives if they're not like looking into their health and wellness you know, from about 40 on. So, so, Mm -hmm. you know, a healthy woman is really an empowered woman. She's kind of out of the system. You know, in my, my goal is, and I don't know if I'll achieve it, but I think I've got pretty good chances is I don't want to become a chronic patient Mm -hmm. in my 60s, 70s, 80s, God willing, 90s. So I, maybe that's why Kristen, maybe you think differently. Well, I I mean, I think we've got, we've got a couple of factors at place. We had a really, really, really robust and horribly done research study um, called the Women's Health Initiative, WHI for short, that happened in the late 90s and was abruptly stopped prematurely in the early 2000s after there were some certain safety signals that came out of the study. I'm not going to get too much into the weeds. We go over this in detail in our book. And, you know, a lot of women might have heard some of it and might not. But essentially, this study was looking at older women well beyond 10 years of menopause, which is where this window of opportunity came. But it's not that they were 10 years past menopause. It was that they had been uh, subject physically to the hormonal declines of menopause through perimenopause and menopause for almost two decades. Okay. So you've got this unhealthy body. They were metabolically unhealthy. They were obese. They were smokers. They were type two diabetics. None of them were pre-screened for cancer. So we have this really not great cohort of people. Then we gave them really crappy, uh, forms of synthetic hormones, not bioidentical hormones, hormones that do have de- different molecular Um, shapes and therefore act at the receptor in a way that's not quite, you know, it's like listening to trying to talk to Siri and get her to, you know, Mm. communicate with you. That's good, but not exact. Um, So we had these poor hormones and then we gave them in ways that actually increased risk because at the time they didn't realize that swallowing our estrogens would actually predispose this to other risks. Hmm. So this really bad study occurred and there some result in the early 2000s was hormone therapy is dangerous. It causes cancer. It causes the heart disease. It causes these things. Everyone should stop it. Why that's relevant is because that's what's been taught in our medical schools ever since, right? Mm-hmm. And it takes about, now we had within about four to five years, you started to see the WHI study authors walk back their own conclusions. Mm-hmm. They have for the most part, entirely disavowed themselves of every conclusion that came out of there with a few exceptions, which were actually showing benefits to Mm. HRT and they will hold by to those. But what's happened is then it takes a good 17 years for new research to really reach our curriculum. So if we're talking mid early 2000s plus 17 years, we're just starting to kind of come out of this incredible hangover effect of a horrible study that taught generations of doctors that hormones are dangerous and bad okay that piece is what the world landscape is now dependent upon are these doctors who think hormones are scary and bad and whatnot in addition although you know people who specialize in say obstetrics and gynecology they're really focused on puberty fertility conception postpartum and boom their Mm -hmm. knowledge stops And so not only do these doctors have bad information with respect to hormones, they're not trained in postmenopausal women or, you know, midlife and beyond health. And I think the statistics recently came out, there's like 67% of all residents say they don't feel equipped to even talk to a postmenopausal woman. Hmm. This is not good for us, right? So this is why the conventional standard of care, it has this hangover effect of bad science. And then it has, unfortunately, kind of the interventional big pharma i'm the solution sort of thing and providing us these very subpar off the shelf uniform options that don't quite address women's health but they sure as hell line their pockets Mm. and so that's that's why you know when you ask why are we here that's why we're here 
Yeah, that makes total sense. It's very similar to the outdated dietary dogma of saturate fat and cholesterol. It's the same thing over and over again. It's a broken system, yeah. broken system, and the root cause is is not working. So we have to look at different places, different voices. I'm super excited to hear about your book. I, I have a sense that some of that, the motivation behind that is dispelling some of these myths and empowering women again. So tell us a little bit about the, the book. I'm, I'm super excited. I want to have you guys back on as well when that launches and you know really dive in and get some more details. But give us the the impetus, the why, and the vision behind the book? Well, the vision was like our past, you know, years of working with like probably a thousand women at this point, if not more, um, you know, our own journeys, our mentorship. But basically, we take women on a real deep understanding of what it means to lose hormones. Like, again, so many women see it as well, they can no longer get pregnant or, you know, it's a loss of fertility. We speak to women all the time or we see women on social media who are like, menopause, no more periods. And we actually say to them, if you truly understood what that meant, you would not celebrate it. Mm. <laughs> so that's part of the book. And then we get into um, all about HRT, A to Z. We don't leave anything off. Um Christine, and we give can... guidance for the metabolic issues that we talked about yeah. because we do believe so firmly. I mean, we have a lot of women who are looking for an easy button. That's unfortunately another outcropping mm. of today's very broken system is like, tell me what I need for HRT and I'll take it. And we're like, whoa, slow down. You know, if you're carrying 60 pounds overweight and you're really inflammatory and you're staying up all night and your stress is off the charts or one or more of the above, this needs to be addressed before we just start putting hormones back in the tank. Yes. Um, and so we do try and walk women through kind of why metabolic health is important. We even get into here's a, you know, a list of metabolic markers to look at your doctor pulling a, you know, TSH to check your thyroid, um, you know, looking at a basic lipid panel. Sorry about that. <laughs> Zoom and it's thumbs up. <laughs> but looking at a basic lipid panel and trying to extrapolate your actual heart disease risk from that mm -hmm. is total crap because lipids are not dangerous. You know, lipids remodeled and aging and not clearing from the body can get dangerous. So we, we try and educate women so that they have something to kind of march into their doctor and say, look, I want to check these things. I want to preserve these things. And I'm going to, you know, adopt these interventions to sort of help me get there. So we try and give some women some actionable, you know, things to work on in the book, um, some guideposts on this road that they're traveling. And then, you know, the whole HRT A to Z. And I, I think Marie and I need to step back one thing and say, as much as we love hormones and as much as we love HRT, there are some people, it's much smaller than most people believe, who uh, probably are not good candidates for HRT. And that has to do with usually some genetic issues um, and, you know, active health conditions for themselves. I am someone who's been told, oh, you know, your mom had breast cancer three times. You shouldn't be on hormones. That's an absolute fallacy and yet another lie that women have been sold. Um, the hormones did not cause cancer. If you look at the rates of breast cancer in women, they're highest in postmenopausal women. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, how can we blame the hormones if they're occurring at times where we have no hormones, right? So that's always something we want to step back. But, you know, women who have true active clotting disorders, who have true advanced atherosclerotic issues, um, women who have liver disease, very severe liver disease, who are active cancer patients, not past and not, you know, potential because of family history, those women do need different interventions. And we, in the book, we do address that. And we say, look, you deserve to preserve your health span to the extent you can as well. And so here are some options, whether they're herbals, et cetera. And then we just try and honor that there are some women for whom it's still too scary. Right. And we, you know, we appreciate that. We, we hope that with the book, you come to the point where you know, you are more open-minded about it. But if they're women who just do not want to do it or cannot do it, we do provide some kind of guide maps for them as well. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. yeah.